Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT, and I have a really cool collaboration video for you guys today. I've been talking with another YouTube photographer and Instagrammer named Noe. He's from Seoul, South Korea, and his photography has been a huge inspiration to me, and that's why I really wanted to work with him. Definitely give his Instagram and YouTube channel a look, and I highly recommend following and subscribing to Noe because his work is absolutely gorgeous. So for this collaboration, what we decided to do was swap some photos. I sent him some of my portraits and he gave me some of his street photography images. And what we're gonna do is he's gonna edit my photos with his style and I'm gonna edit his photos. And we're just gonna kinda see what happens and show them off at the end, the befores and the afters and kinda compare styles. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up a couple of his images and I'm gonna show you guys this new program I've been using called Aurora HDR. And it's made by the company Skylum, and they graciously sent me this program to try it out and see what I think. So let's open up the first image in Aurora, and I'll show you guys kinda of how I use this program and what it can do. So we'll open up photo number one here. And what's cool about Aurora is I can make an HDR looking image out of just one photo and play with the details. So I'm gonna click Create HDR and Aurora is gonna load the image here. And what's cool is this program actually uses AI, artificial intelligence, to kind of figure out what your scene looks like and makes little minor adjustments based on the individual photo, which I think is really cool. So we have the image here open, and on the right you can see some of my adjustments here. It looks a lot like Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom. And on the bottom I have the option for different presets that I can use as well. And the preset that I used is this impressive drama, and it really just made the colors pop, it added a little bit of glow, and I think it goes really well with the look I'm going for in this image. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is adjust the white balance a little bit. It looks a little greenish from the fluorescent lights. So I'm going to compensate for that, add a little magenta, and it's still a little bit green. I'll add some more magenta in here. And that's starting to look better. I'm also gonna bring up the shadows a touch bring down the highlights because I want to preserve the highlight detail in here so you can see all of this detail with the lights. I really love this shot. I'm going to bring up the whites and bring down the blacks a touch. Now I'm going to scroll down, turn up the vibrance just a bit. And here are some of the really fun tools in Aurora. This HDR clarity, HDR smart structure. So I'm going to turn up the clarity slightly to about 15, 16, and I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can really see what it's doing as soon as this image loads up. And I'm also gonna turn up this HDR microstructure, which does sharpening to the details in the image, and you can change the radius of it, and I will also turn up the HDR denoise. And another neat feature about Aurora is the ability to open up LUTs and apply LUTs to your image right here in this program. And it looks like this preset applied a little bit of image radiance, which is kind of a glow around the highlights, and I really like that, but I'm gonna turn it down slightly. And I think that looks good. Let's take a look at the before and the after. So he shot it about a stop underexposed to preserve the highlight details, and then I brought all the detail back in the shadows and we still have all of our details here in the highlights. So I think this looks good for a basic image. I'm gonna take this over into Photoshop and we're gonna keep editing. All right, so we have our image here open in Photoshop after we just exported out of Aurora. And we have our layers here over to the right. And I'm gonna show you guys what the final image looks like that we're going after. And then I'll break down each of the layers and what they do. So if I turn all these layers on, this is gonna be our final image. and. I kind of went after a little bit of Noe style and mixed it with a little bit of my own with an orange and teal look that I like, and this is what we got. So let's turn all these layers off, and I'll show you guys how I edited his photo. So let's turn all of these off. So to get started, I have two layers over here. They are glow layers, and I use them to make the lights glow just a little bit more. And if you see I turn them on, this adds a nice blue glow up the center, and this other glow layer adds a nice orange glow to the lights in the windows. So let's break down how I made these glow layers. 
we started with our background layer. I duplicated it by hitting Control J or Command J on a Mac. So next, I'm gonna to go to Image, Adjustments, and Threshold. And what Threshold does, you can see we have a little histogram here, and we can move the slider up and down, and it turns our image completely black and white and there's no levels of gray, everything is just black or white. So what I can do is I can use this to select just the very highlights of the image. I can select just the alley down here and the lights coming from the alley, or I can select a little bit of the windows. But for both of these, I use kind of the same technique. I selected the highlights of the image by turning up the threshold a bit. Click OK. And you can see now I just have the highlights and the very dark portions of the image. And I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and when that opens up, that provides a nice blur right there. I'm gonna turn this up a bit more to get more of a glow. 50 or 60 usually works. It'll depend on the size of the light source in the image and how much of a glow that you want. So we have our glow layer. I'm going to set it to screen, and you can see that makes a nice glow right up in the center of the street. And some of our windows are glowing here a little bit as well. And that looks great. So now I'm just gonna colorize this layer by going to Hue and Saturation or hitting Control U or Command U on the keyboard. That brings up our Hue and Saturation. I'm gonna click Colorize and turn up the saturation quite a bit and play with the hue and I could make this orange if I wanted to, which looks pretty cool. But I'm going for kind of a futuristic look here. So I'm gonna go for a nice blue, turn up that saturation, and hit OK. So this is basically how we made our blue glow layer. The second one we made here is a little bit brighter. And I used the exact same technique when I created our orange layer for the lights. And then I just turned up the brightness a little bit. So we can get rid of this layer turn our glow layers on. And for our top layer up here, I'm gonna turn this on. This is our gradient or vignette layer. And all I did was go over to the gradient tool. I turned this layer to soft light and I dragged in a vignette by using this gradient tool. And I use this to bring the viewer's eyes from the outside towards the center because I want the center of interest of this image to be right here, right up the middle. This is a nice symmetrical shot and I just want the viewer's eye to kind of gradually come in from the side and look at all this movement that's going on in the center. And lastly, let's take a look at our color correction group here. I have a color lookup table layer here, or a LUT layer, and I have curves. So if we turn both of these on, let's turn off our curves, and for our color lookup table, or our LUT, I applied my run and gun cool and lifted LUT, which I'm gonna be bringing back to you guys very soon. I know a lot of people have been asking where it's at, and I have just finally finished my website, and it's gonna go live very soon, and I'll have that LUT available for download again. But you can see the huge difference this LUT made. It lifts the shadows, makes the shadows nice and blue, and it brings out the oranges and the blues, and this really has a cool, almost kind of Star Wars technology futuristic feel to it. And lastly, we have our curves layer, which crushes our shadows back a little bit, makes our highlights pop, and just makes this a very cool looking futuristic image. So let's open up our curves layer here, and you can see that I crushed the shadows just a little bit, I brought the shadows down, and I brought up the highlights just a touch. So here is the before image before I processed it in Aurora. Here is the image that I exported out of Aurora, and here is the final image that I edited. So let's take a look at a couple more images that Noe sent me. So here is the second image. I did the exact same processing I did in Aurora, and I imported it the exact same as I did to the last image in Photoshop. And what I did here, you can see, I made a nice vignette, again, using the same gradient technique that I showed you guys in the last photo. I applied my run and gun cool and lifted LUT to make these nice blues pop out and make the oranges pop out and kind of give a nice warm and cool look here. I just love that contrast between warm and cool and it just really draws your eye around the image on top of this being an absolutely awesome photo with all of these neon signs, which I absolutely love. 
and then you have this guy that's walking up the street. And this just makes for a really awesome photo to edit. And we also have our curves layer here, which kind of brings this photo to life. We crushed down our shadows and we made our highlights really pop. And you can see here, just crushed our shadows and we did a simple S curve and that is it. So here is the before image before Aurora. Here is the export into Photoshop and here is our final image. So let's take a look at one final image. Here's the before and here is the after. Again, this is an absolutely awesome shot that he took. These two individuals walking here with the umbrellas look absolutely gorgeous, especially on this rainy night. You have all these neon signs going here and oh, this is just an awesome photo. So again, I applied my lookup table here and I applied a similar curves layer where I turn down my shadows. I'm actually gonna turn them up a little bit because I want a little bit more of that shadow detail. And I'm gonna turn up my highlights just a touch. I've noticed every now and then I'll go back to an image and realize that I wanna edit a little bit different. So it's always a good idea to take a step back from your computer every now and then after you've been doing some editing for a couple hours and go back and take a look with a fresh set of eyes. And sometimes you'll see some things that you've missed or you'll have a different perspective on the image. So I think this looks pretty good. Again, all the credit goes to Noe as a photographer. His street photography is absolutely awesome. And if you like his work, make sure you follow his Instagram. And I think you guys might get some enjoyment out of checking out his editing versus my editing. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned a little bit about editing. Be sure to check out Noe's video as well on his YouTube channel. I'll have all of his links down in the description description. And before you take off, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to both of us if you haven't already. And until next weekend, get out and go shoot.